Hey guys, it's dark in here. Let's turn some lights on. So in the hip, like everything else, we have a flashlight. And by default, it's on left alt and L. And it gives us a light that follows our cursor around. You can use it to illuminate your different cockpit instruments, circuit breaker panels, all kinds of different things, shine at your pilot's face, whatever you want to do. And you could go through an entire cold start procedure with just the flashlight, but at some point it's probably not quite enough and you're going to want a little more general light. And so for that we've got a few different options. So if we look up here, just above the triangle panel for both pilots, there's a dome light. And that has both red and white modes. And the switch for it is on the triangle panel here. There's white. And we can do the same thing over here. Triangle panel, dome light, white, and there it is. And you can see it gives us some light. If we turn off our flashlight, it's some light, but it's not really enough to do everything with. We can also flip this to red. The same thing over here, flip the dome light to red. And this one's a little brighter. Thankfully, they fixed the issue after 2.5.6 dropped, where it was incredibly bright, like blindingly bright. Now it looks pretty normal. But again, it's not quite enough to... You couldn't fly by this. You still can't really see anything here. Turn that off. The hip also has a full suite of backlights, red backlights for all of the instruments and panels and gauges and everything else. We can turn them on with five, yes, five, banks of knobs. So the first one is over here. This is behind the pilot commander, way at the back, a little bit up high. Turn on the left knob for dim and the right knob for bright. And this gives us lighting for the top left half of the cockpit, all the way as far as the weapon circuit breaker panels but it does not cover anything in the center, does not cover anything off to the right, or any of the co-pilot's instruments. It does cover instruments for the pilot commander, but if you're seeing here, it does not have backlights for this one or for this one. Now if we turn those off again, there's another one over on this side near the triangle panel for the pilot navigator, and again, we can turn that on for dim and then for bright. And this one gives us our bomb panel, and our triangle panel, and our navigation radios, and our heater, and our radio, and all of our non-combat circuit breakers. But it doesn't give us anything in the center either, and it doesn't give us anything on the left side. And it gives us the instruments here for the pilot navigator. But again, turn our light on, there are two that are missing that are still not lit. We can then turn these off. And there's a third set of these lights that is behind the flight engineer. That's the guy in the middle. And it's right back here. Let me turn them on. These ones don't seem to have a dim. The top switch does not, or the top knob does nothing. We just turn that one on, it does nothing. So it's only bright. I'm guessing that's a bug. But as you can see, this one now covers our power panels for AC and DC, covers our lighting and heating bank over here, it gives us a backlight for the other light switches, and it sets up our APU, our engine start, our fire detection test, and our fuel. It also powers the backlights for the autopilot panel down here in the center, which is the flight engineer's responsibility. So. Each person in the cockpit has their own bank of backlight brightness knobs, but the but both of the pilots, the two, uh, the pilot commander and the pilot navigator, also have one extra one each. So for the pilot commander, if I go and turn on his backlight bank again, right here, and then I bring my flashlight slowly across. Look for a panel that hasn't been illuminated yet. Right here. The MS-61 voice recorder. If I turn off the flashlight, this one has its own backlight brightness knob for some unknown reason. But if we turn that up, now we have a backlight there. So now the whole left side is 
complete along with the center because we have the flight engineer's light on. And then if we go and add the ones on the right, now we have backlights for the entire upper cockpit all the way around. But we're still missing the backlights for these two instruments here and these two instruments over here. Now, if you know what these are already, there's something in common with all of them. This is your radar altimeter. This is your Doppler hover indicator. This is your Doppler drift indicator, and this is your Doppler navigation panel. All of these use the Doppler system in the tail of the helicopter, and they have not only their own brightness knob, but also a power switch that has to be turned on in order for the backlight to work at all. So the power switch is this one here on the pilot navigator's triangle panel. It's the 5.5 volt light switch on off. This has to be on or you will not be able to turn up the brightness, but just turning it on is not enough. There's also an intensity knob and that's behind his head. If you look for the med kit back here, moving my microphone so you can hear me properly, find the med kit and then look down below it and this white panel here with a knob on it, it says backlight 5.5V. Turn that up. And now we should have, if we zoom in, backlighting for our Doppler nav, turn off the flashlight, backlight for the drift angle, backlight for the Doppler hover indicator, and backlight for our radar altimeter. So there's all of the backlights. That's the entire cockpit lit up and ready to go. And you can also then turn on your dome lights if you want to for a little bit of extra light. Might be helpful in seeing a few things. And it's actually a pretty well lit place. Now there's a couple other things that we should look at inside the cockpit here. If we look straight down at our autopilot panel. I'm going to turn the light back on. Right here, the warning lights, warn LTS, test, and flash. So this has two different modes. If we flip it up, it's going to illuminate all of the different warning lights in the cockpit. If we look up over there, all of these enunciator lights are now on. And up here, all of our enunciator lights are on. I'm gonna turn off the dome light. Now there's a night versus day switch here that's supposed to adjust the brightness of certain panels or certain lights based on that switch. Make them dimmer for night, but I haven't figured out what it actually affects, if anything, in our version of the HIP, if it's even modeled. But the switch does work, it just doesn't seem to change anything. So we'll leave it on night. And then we also have the flasher mode Flip this back down, flip it to flasher, and listen. So the flasher is for warnings like icing and fire and generator failure and engine failure things that it, it tries to get the attention, tries harder to get the pilot's attention over a normal enunciator light for something less serious. And that clicking you're hearing is the flasher system itself trying to flash these lights. So you've probably heard this before when you kill a generator by pulling too much collective and you hear this clicking and that's not it retrying, it's not the helicopter trying to uh, reactivate the generator, it's literally the flasher system. And if we come and look over on this right side panel again here, where it says flash, if we turn that off, you can see these two warnings right here for our generators. They go solid and the sound stops. So you can actually turn that off so when your generators fail, you'll just get Gen 1 fail and Gen 2 fail enunciator lights 
but you won't get the, f the clicking sound and the flashing. So that's everything for backlights inside the cockpit and dome lights and enunciator lights and everything that you might use up front. But you've also got potentially a couple dozen people sitting in the back in the cargo area. And if we jump out to an external view now, they're still sitting in darkness, even though we've got plenty of backlight and we can put on dome lights and everything. They're still sitting in darkness. Now I wanted to quickly point out before we turn on those lights, if you turn on the dome lights inside here and then jump to an external view, those are actually reflected. And you will see both the red and the white light in the external view, which I thought was kind of cool. Well, let's turn those off again. Now, along the right side, so along here, we have a bank of external lights, but we also have these first two here that say lighting standby and lighting general. These are cabin lights for the back, for the passenger slash cargo area. And if we flip the standby light on and then jump out again, get this nice ambient blue light inside there, which looks quite nice but it's not really that bright, um, and there is a brighter white light. So if we come back in here and we turn off the standby and turn on the general, and then jump out again, now we have this nice bright white light in the back. And interestingly, it looks like, oh no, it's just a window, okay. So yeah, so there's a window to the door in the back and the light bleeds through into the cockpit as well. So there's general lighting in the back. Now we can kind of keep working our way from left to right here. The next one is our nav lights. Now navigation lights have two settings, down for dim, up for bright. So let's set them on dim and have a look. So this gives us our red and green and our white tail light. And it will put them on the outer pylons if we have the hard points mounted. If we don't, it'll put them on the body of the helicopter a little bit further up. I think just under that window there. Now if we go and have a look at what that looks like in bright mode. Uh, this one, sorry. They get quite a bit brighter. They illuminate the entire side of the helicopter and they're quite visible. Next we have our formation lights. Jump out and look at them. We get these three fairly dim lights here on the tail. This is so you can fly formation with a helicopter and keep the lights the same distance apart to know that you're in the same place. And if we go and flip those to bright, they aren't actually any brighter, so that might be potentially two bugs we found now in this video, just related to the lights. But they are the same brightness regardless of that setting. If we turn them off, the next one is our blade tip lights. Now these are used as a safety precaution for any ground crew working around the helicopter at night so that they know where the blades are. If you look out the front, you can see them already right there. And there's a little light in the end of each blade tip. And that turns on and you can see where the edges of the blades are at all times, which is great if you're having to work around the helicopter so you can stay safe. There's even a note in the manual that this is not required for DCS because the ground crew is virtual. There's only an on-off for that. There's no brightness. We just turn that off. And then the last one we have for external lights is anti-collision which is our great big flasher. And this again has no brightness, it's just on or off. And it blinks and spins and is the light you need for inclement weather. And visibility is low. So that's it for external lights on this panel. But wait, there's more. So not only do we just have those lights, like most airframes, if we jump over to the pilot commander's seat, we have a taxi light. 
and that's down here to the left of his of his main panel. We can turn that on, and that gives us a nice little forward-facing light for taxiing wherever we are to see in front of us. Again, no brightness setting, just on or off. Turn off the flashlight. It's fairly bright. Turn that one off. We also have, because this is a search and rescue capable helicopter, a couple of searchlights on the front. So there's one here, and right next to it. And then if we jump to the pilot navigator seat, he's just got one switch for lights, and that's for the right side one. So I'm going to turn his off and show you the outside. So there's one light. And then if we flip his light on, there's two lights. So these illuminate directly below you. They're good for search and rescue, for illuminating uh, a FARP or a precision landing pad or somewhere you need to see directly below you. But these are kind of interesting. They're not just pointed straight down. You can also angle them. So I can point them forward and then they can be double taxi lights. They can also point up to some degree. I'm not sure why, but I mean, you can and you can bring them back down. And then the fun part is you can work these ones independently. So I can bring back just the pilot navigator's light and then I can bring back just the pilot commander's light. Now they don't also just go forward and backwards. They can also point in and they can point away from each other. Now this might be the third bug of the night because they can continue to rotate pretty much indefinitely and then they shine into the cockpit and light up the whole cockpit. And they can go completely around left and right, 360 degrees. I'm pretty sure the real one can't do that. But it is pretty cool. So you can bring these lights out, and then you can have them point around. You can operate them totally independently of each other. There are bindings for them. If I bring these out, you can actually have it point backwards behind you which is pretty cool there's a lot you can do with this if you bring them out and just spin them around I mean at this point spinning around 360 degrees should be totally reasonable that's just when they're fully retracted it seems a bit silly for them to be able to do that there it is let's retract those and I think that more or less covers all of the lights in the hip just turn these off, turn that off, but wait, there's more. There are two more that I almost forgot because they're not really lights per se, but they are. So the thing we don't have on right now is our weapon systems, and if we did, we should have a gun sight right in front of us, right here. So if we just turn on our three circuit breaker banks here for weapons. One, two, three. Now we have a gun sight. And we can control the brightness of this with a knob that is just below bank three. So there's bank one, two, three, and then just to the left of it and below, like right in line with the labels, there's a knob. And if I move my head over here, it does say sight dimmer on it. And we can grab that and move that up and down to adjust the brightness of our gun sight. All the way up, all the way down. And then the last one is our master arm, which is up straight above the pilot uh, commander's head. And I've actually got it on already. If I flip that off, turn it on, and we get this little red dome light that doesn't actually illuminate anything. So it, it's not really a light, but it's a light. And that just tells us that our master arm is on. So that, I think, covers everything for lights in the hip. So we had a look at the flashlight, I had a look at the dome lights on either side of the triangle panel. We looked at the three banks of red backlights plus the extra light for the Doppler system behind the pilot navigator and the extra light for the voice recorder system above the pilot commander. We had a look at the taxi light at both of the search lights. We looked at the general, the standby and the general lighting for the cargo area in the back. 
looked at the navigation, formation, blade tip, anti-collision lights for external, and we looked at the enunciator test and flasher system. So, oh, and along with the gun sight brightness and the master arm, I think that's everything. So I, I did talk a little bit about lights in the cold start video, but I didn't go into greater detail on it because, well, look at the length of this video. Um, but I think that's all of it. So hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully it was valuable. If I got something wrong, if I missed anything, if you know of some lights that I missed here, because there are probably some, uh, let me know. Leave a comment and I'll see you guys next time.